my name is Jonathan Klein, and I graduated uh, from Coastal Carolina with a degree in um, intelligence gathering and national security studies. I graduated in uh, 2017, so I, I actually transferred to Coastal. I was uh, I was at a military school for two years, so I only did half of my um, undergrad there, but uh, probably the best best two years of my life. Met some of my best friends. Uh, got to study and take classes from Dr. Fitzanakis, who is um, you know, still one of my mentors to this day, probably actually one of the most important mentors I've had in my life. Um, I, uh, I graduated from Coastal and I spent a, a year abroad in Spain um, studying Spanish. And when I got back from that, um, I joined the army as a uh, infantry officer. And I served in the 101st Airborne um, as an infantry officer who specialized in uh, reconnaissance. Um, I got out in, in February and uh, I started my master's degree at Johns Hopkins. And I also started in March um, my new role at Bank of America. So it's kind of like a combination of a multiple students at some of the best countries or uh, some of the best schools uh, in the country, but, you know, arguably the world. Um, so two of the guys, the founders, Andre Molchensky, uh, he's a um, attorney. He's also a Ukrainian national, and he's currently getting his MBA at Stanford. Um, the other founder, Alex Clark, he is a uh, former, um, he's a West Point grad, former infantry officer uh, at 25th ID in Hawaii, and um, now is also a Stanford MBA student. Um, and they are the ones who kind of, Andre with his family who lives in the city, uh, Kriviri that we went to in Ukraine, um, he understood the need for this medical equipment because of what is happening there. Um, the level of violence is uh, so surreal that mm -hmm. essentially um, this city's medical infrastructure was crumbling and um, Andre uh, put together this initiative um, in tandem with the Ukrainian Freedom Fund uh, and British Ukrainian Aid um, to find some way to help. And what he came up with was um, raising $100,000 to procure, excuse me, ambulances. Um, and then to ensure that there was a handover, because we $100,000 is a fair amount of money to ask for donors. Um, we wanted to be very transparent. So we promised that we would be the ones to deliver them to the front line mm -hmm. city of Kribi Ri, um, so that they could ensure that their money was, you know, going to have maximum effect and we would get those supplies that people needed. Um, so Andre asked uh, Alex to be a part of it. Alex and him, they founded it together. Uh, Alex ended up calling one of my best friends from my childhood, Brian Bowie, who's a um, also former army officer, uh, military intelligence, uh, West Point grad, and also um, at Harvard uh, Business School right now. So um, you know, these minds that these people have are, you know, this, <laughs> unbelievable, man. I, I like to think of myself as like a pretty bright guy, but um, man, these guys just are so impressive on so many levels, uh, how humble and hardworking they are and, um, you know, the things that they can juggle in tandem. Um, so Alex reached out to Brian and uh, Brian immediately reached out to me and um, Brian and I's like only condition really uh, for helping was that we just wanted to be on the ground in Ukraine, um, you know, physically moving these ambulances. So that's kind of the founding of it. Um, mm -hmm. From that point, uh, we spent like a month more or less fundraising. Um, we were targeting kind of like high net worth individuals, um, companies that were willing to like help out and um, I think that we've kind of kept like the companies and the, uh, the individual donors kind of, we've been relatively discreet, mm -hmm. um, but we ended up surpassing our goal of hundred thousand dollars. And I think we ended up with around like, I think around like um, 120,000. Wow. So we were able to buy three ambulances um, as well as uh, 69 radios, which mm -hmm. um, are being utilized, uh, you know, in a medical capacity. Um, in order to ensure that, you know, these um, people providing medical aid can communicate to one another. 
And um, we actually are looking at a fourth ambulance right now with, uh, you know, some of the funds that are, mm. that are left over. We, we departed mm. um, and we spent about, I think it was like six, six days mm. uh, with it, with, in Ukraine, moving um, through the Hungarian border, which is where we, we procured the ambulances in Hungary. Um, and then we drove to the border, which was about a four hour drive from Budapest um and then through ukraine it was a two-day drive um taking into account like the amount of like checkpoints and also they have a curfew so you can't you can't drive at night um you can't go outside like everybody has to be indoors it's like a safety thing um and we arrived in kriviri uh in eastern ukraine um, on their Independence Day, which is the uh, 24th of August. So it's a very special moment um, to get there, you know, at such like a trying time, you know, with this uh, medical relief that they, that they like desperately, desperately need. And um, essentially with like the ambulances that we, that we brought, um, we doubled their, uh, their medical capabilities. Um, so like the city of 600,000 people, you know, they maybe had a handful of ambulances uh, that were um, up and running and able to respond to emergencies. And uh, effectively, we we doubled that. So it was, um, you know, in the scope of the conflict, it was, you know, it's like as much as as optimistic as I try and be like, of course, it's like a drop in the bucket. You know, we didn't we didn't save the day by any means, but um, it's it's nice to know that you know, lives will be, will be saved because of the initiative that these men that I referenced earlier, um, they took such an initiative and so much work, uh, put it on themselves and, you know, made it a reality. I got up. Yeah. After being in that environment, I got up and, uh, took my dog out, um, which was like a bit of a culture shock. Um, still like kind of adjusting from some of the things, uh, over there. And, um, yeah, when I went to work, I had a discussion with my boss this morning and my, uh, I have classes, you know, that start today for my master's program at Hopkins. So it's just, you know, you yeah. take a 14 hour flight from a war zone and you're back in back, yeah. Charlotte. And it's just like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah. It was weird. It was weird. Just like standing outside this morning with like my coffee and like, you know, um, no air raid sirens, like, uh, you know, no military checkpoints, you know, no like fear or anxiety of, you know, kind of like personal safety um, yeah. or the safety of the people that I, you know, more importantly, the safety of the people that I met there that I've, you know, grown to love. Um, mm. Actually, ten, 10 minutes away from where we were staying, um, Russia bombed, uh, bombed the city with a cluster bomb, wow. which is uh, important to note. It's against the Geneva Convention. Uh, to utilize those kind of munitions. Um, essentially what that ordinance does, what that bomb does is it detonates in midair and um, mm. spreads smaller explosives about a city block wide. Wow. Um, so that's kind of like, you know, the environment there and what these, um, these people are dealing with on a daily basis. And uh, it's, um, you know, I was only there for a short period of time and I, I think it'll take a while for me to like adjust. Um, but you know, there are people who live their everyday lives there yeah. and, uh, that's, that's their reality. And it's, it's heartbreaking, honestly, you know, the American media, you know, it's kind of always like the next thing, like what's happening now, like, what should we be upset about? Um, and, uh, you know, the reality is that this like war in Ukraine, um, maybe it doesn't get as much attention anymore, but it's, you know, it's um, being described to me and like with what I saw, it's a literal, um, you know, bloodbath. So hopefully this exposure keeps in, you know, people's mind. And that's ultimately why we agree to go on camera and talk about it. So.